All right, so let's see how we can get the kinematic equations. Um, for this case, we're just going to use small strains, and we're going to start with the case in one dimension. So imagine that you have a bar, like in this case, which is subjected to a force, and it is stretched in the long direction of the bar. So you could map the position of this bar in an x axis, like this one, where the x is the, the position along the bar and at time zero, for example, in a region of the bar, like somewhere over here, you could define a segment within the bar which uh, has not been stretched yet. So at time zero, there is uh, no force and Let's use uh, red. And we're going to have a segment that goes from here to there from position X to position, let me write it on top, to position X plus delta X on the, on the other side. After I apply a force, as we said, the bar is going to stretch. And when the bar stretches, the position is also going to move. And let's assume in this case that the bar is fixed on the left side. So it is not moving anywhere. And therefore, the deformation that I would expect for this bar would be such that this point over here would move to a new position somewhere over there and this point over here would also tend to move to a position which is as much as the first point, first point uh, translated and you would expect it to be at least over here but since the bar stretched a little bit it's going to be somewhere over there because of the application of the force. So the new segment in the bar is going to be here, where now I can start seeing and defining new displacements here. The displacement of the first point X is going to be U. The length of the new segment now from here to there, I'm going to call it dxt, where t stands for a time different than zero. And the additional displacement that I get from the second end of the segment, I'm going to call it du. This is the actual stretch of the segment due to the force. Okay, uh, with this, with uh, these uh, definitions, now I can write what is strain. Strain in one dimension is going to be basically the length after it deformed minus the original length divided the original length. And you can use the all the definitions that we see over here and find that the position or the length after it deformed is going to be the this point minus this location over here. And let me write that x plus u plus dx, which was the original length, plus du, that minus the position, original position, uh, the position of this point, x plus u, and all of that minus the original uh, length. The original length is x plus dx minus 
x and all of that divided the same thing x plus dx minus x so you're going to see here that there are many terms that are going to cancel out x u and at the end of the day you see there is a dx over here too so this dx is going to cancel too at the end of the day the result is going to be that the deformation linear deformation in one dimension is going to be equal to the relative displacement divided the original length and in terms of uh, mathematics what this is telling us is that this is a derivative the derivative of displacement as a function of position position x in this case all right so this is the case for uh, one dimension let's take now these same concepts but to three dimensions let me put a separator over here and now this is going to be for three-dimensional conditions okay so here is going to be a little bit more complicated so we're not going to go through a solution step by step but we'll rather propose a solution and check that that solution makes sense and in three dimensions I'm going to have three axes let's say that I have a point at some particular uh, position the position now is going to be not a number just one number but it's going to be a position vector x and if this particular point moves somewhere else somewhere else that's going to be defined by a displacement very similar to what we had before but now it's in three dimensions and the new position vector at the new time is going to be x t okay so similar to what we saw before uh, let's try to write derivatives of displacement as a function of position for this uh, three-dimensional space and this is what is called a Jacobian matrix and this Jacobian matrix is going to look like this the derivative of displacement in direction 1 with respect to position in direction 1 and the other derivatives of the same displacement but in the other directions but now we have three displacements right so we're going to have the same thing in the other directions and third direction and third displacement remember these are partial derivatives and the last one okay our job now is gonna be to try to understand how this Jacobian matrix relates to the strain tensor in three dimensions all right so let me just uh, complete a few things over here the displacement the position vector is formed by x1 x2 and x3 let me improve this comma and the displacement vector is formed by u1, u2, and u3, which are the components uh, that we see over there. All right. So in order to understand then what this strain tensor means, what we're going to do is we're going to decompose the Jacobian matrix in three matrices let me copy this paste it right here 
and what we're going to do is to write this Jacobian matrix as a summation of first the diagonal components 0, 0 and finally this one 0, 0 all right, so uh, we're, we're going to add another term later on, okay? So there is going to be a plus sign over here. So, so don't worry about this equality right now because there are some other things that we're going to add up. But first, let's try to understand what these diagonal elements mean. And for that, I'm going to come back to the case of the 1D case. In the 1D case, a linear strain means the variation of displacement in a direction relative to position in the same direction. So similar to that, these derivatives of displacement in one direction with respect to the same direction, what they are going to mean is a linear strain. And let's go a little bit further and try to explain that with a schematic. Imagine that we have here a solid with axis uh, and coordinate system 1, 2, 3 with original size as in a square. After I apply a deformation uh, or a force to this, to this square, it stretches, let's say, just in direction 1. to the new configuration, the new position. Uh, I, I don't mean this to, to move in the, in the origin. And so here, the original size of the, of the element is dx1 and the relative displacement is du1. Therefore, the linear strain in direction 1, by analogy with the previous equation, is du1 derivative of displacement 1 in direction 1. And notice the indices. The, indices, the index 1, 1, comes from here, from the derivative in direction number one with respect to position also in direction number one. So you can generalize this for all the, uh, the, the other two directions and then we're going to get epsilon 2, 2 and epsilon 3, 3. Let me hold on on that a little bit and we'll, we'll come back. All right, so let's see with what else we need in order to fulfill this equality. All right, so here I'm going to have to add another matrix, and uh, this matrix, uh, let me move it a little bit towards the left because we're going to need uh, that space. I cannot add any, anything else in the diagonal terms, so these are going to be 0, 0, and 0. And what I'm going to do here is I have the cross deri derivative du1 dx2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, divide this by 2, and add another component, which looks very similar, but it's not the same, du2 dx1. And to that, I'm going to divide it by 2, okay? So, for the rest of the matrix, then this is going to look one half of the, now, du2, dx3. This is what I have in the Jacobian matrix, but then I add this another quantity. 
and here I'm going to have du to dx3 I just realized I have a tiny mistake here let me fix that this is actually u1 dx1 and here u3 x2 these new terms I'm adding I'm going to subtract, in, uh, subtract them later so don't worry about that and these uh, terms are going to be the same this is going to be a symmetric matrix okay L let me just skip this for now writing those uh, so we continue with the physics understanding what's going on here all right so let's try to understand what we have written and what is the physical explanation of that we're going to do the same thing we're going to here draw a coordinate system one two three in which we have the original undeformed solid which is a cube and after application of stresses this cube deforms to the new configuration which is going to look like this it's going to look like a like a rhomboid let me improve this line Uh, we're going to see later that this is the result of uh, I don't like this let me just try one more time this is the result of the shear stress all right so let's try to understand what's going on here we do know that the original length of the segments uh, similar to what I, I had before here this is dx1 and this one is dx2 let's see the displacement of those segments this uh, this corner of the solid moves from here to there right and notice this is the displacement in direction one the same thing this corner when moves up it moves in direction 2 especially if you think about very small displacements the displacement is going to be predominantly in directions 1 for this case and in direction 2 all right what is du1 divided dx2 uh, that's it's a tangent of an angle and uh, this angle let me use another color this is going to be the angle phi notice that the angle phi in this case characterizes the deformation of the solid and just by simple geometry we can see that the tangent of this angle uh, phi the tangent of phi is equal to d1 divided dx2 or also because I deformed the equal amounts in both directions to du2 dx1 the opposed sides div divided by the adjacent side and I could also see that and I that this angle is going to be we say is the same for for these two cases so if i take the average of these two i should get the same value and notice that the average of these two is actually what we have in the matrix over here so what is this is the average of two times the tangent of phi 
and this is just basically um, so each each of those is one value of the tangent so this is two times the tangent of phi and this is what we are going to define as the strain epsilon 1 2 and this is going to be a shear strain that characterizes this deformation angle this shear strain or distortion angle okay there is one more thing that we have to do here and and of course you know the same applies in the other directions like 1 3 and 2 3 uh, there is one more thing that we have to do uh, in order to fulfill with the quality for the Jacobian matrix and this is going to be to subtract what we added before to the second matrix so in order to do that I'm going to here subtract those quantities so these are going to be zeros we don't mess up with the diagonal terms and in order to fulfill the quality then I need half of du1 dx2 and then I need to subtract the what I added before all right so this is value for this term for the next term let me zoom in it's getting difficult to write in this small space this is du1 dx3 minus du3 dx1 and uh, don't know if you can hear the track in the background today's trash pickup day du2 dx3 and subtract what I originally added to fulfill to the equality of the Jacobian matrix and let me move this one a little bit more over here okay this matrix is going to be symmetric all right so let's try to understand what this uh, matrix is and we're going to do the same thing that we did before we're going to try to understand this physically by looking at the deformation of a solid in three dimensions where the original position original shape is the same as before but now we're going to see that the new matrix is representative of a movement which is a rotation let's see why that x1 and x2 remain the same and now I have the displacement u1 and the other corner it doesn't move up but now this time it moves down right and let me complete here this diagram with dx2 and dx1 okay so let's write now what uh, we have over here so the angle of rotation uh, in this case is uh, going to be the angle let's call it theta and we can see that the tangent of theta is du1 divided dx2 you can see also that from this particular schematic those two quantities are positive right so if i were to add this to du2 divided dx1 since I can see that in my in my graph du2 is negative whenever I do that this is going to be equal to zero because it's going to cancel out d2 
this is the same angle. If I want to quantify the angle of rotation, then what I have to do is I have to change the sign. So if I change the sign, and I have du1x2 minus du2 dx1, negative times negative is going to give me positive, and now this is not going to cancel out. If I take the average of that, I'm going to end up with what is called the component of the rotation omega 1 2 which quantifies rotation okay the same is going to apply for the other directions but at the end of the day what I'm going to be left with is that this Jacobian is going to decompose into these two matrices which compose the strain tensor quantify linear strains and shear strains and this other matrix is going to be the rotation matrix that usually we do not uh, use it we do not use it in, meta in mechanics at least in, in small strains so at the end of the day what I want to capture is just the first part and the first part then just tells me that the strain tensor, and I'm going to write everything again. Let me get a little bit more of space over here to do that. Okay. The strain tensor is going to be a matrix, which is not really the Jacobian, but it's uh, similar to that where I have the linear strains in the diagonal and in the off-diagonal terms I have the shear strains Let me move this so I get a little bit more of space over here. And the same with this one. And with the off diagonal terms. So let's just go ahead and write those to complete the matrix. DU2 dx1, du1, dx2, du3, dx1, plus the cross derivative, and finally this term. I always run out of, run out of space when I write this matrix. Okay, well, I'm going to accommodate this in a little bit. All right, so I wanted to write this matrix entirely so you, you can appreciate that this is a symmetric matrix. Uh, we have followed the rule of writing the first, particularly for the shear terms, the first element plus adding later the, the cross derivative part. And, and since these are just summations, the symmetric element has to be equal to that. All right, so almost done. And now this matrix is looking a lot better. And this matrix is going to be similar to the stress tensor equal to epsilon 1 1 epsilon 1 2 epsilon 1 3 epsilon 2 1 and so on and this is going to be called 
the strain tensor and you can also see that in three dimensions this is going to be a matrix similar to the stress tensor this uh, strain tensor is symmetric it has real values in all the components and we have seen that whenever this is the case then I'm going to have eigenvalues and eigenvectors that are going to be my principal strains similar to principal stresses and the associated principal directions for strains If you remember from uh, linear algebra, uh, this is uh, eigenvalues, then this is how we calculate the principal uh, values. Where eigen comes from, from German, it means own. So this tells us the, the, the properties or like the, the, the own properties of the, of the vector, unique properties that characterize this particular uh, tensor. Uh, one more thing to add here is that uh, similar to also the stress tensor, we're going to have invariants of the strain tensor. And the most popular invariant of the strain tensor is the first invariant of the strain tensor, which is a summation of the diagonal terms. And you can uh, you can show that this is equal to the volumetric strain of the solid where the volumetric strain is defined as the change of volume divided the original volume, similar to the, the notation that we used before, it will be the, the volume of, at the time t minus the volume at the undeformed or original time divided the volume at the original time. All right, so uh, these are the this is the, the derivation of the equations of uh, strain for small strains in three dimensions <laughs>